Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to take a look at one of my more favorite aspects of Apple computer history from the 1990s, and that would be the Apple Copeland operating system. Copeland was designed to be the replacement for System 7, and unfortunately due to internal problems at Apple, it basically never got anywhere near completion. Now the build we're looking at today is build D7E1, which is the first of the leaked copies that made it outside of Apple. To get it running, you need an original Power Macintosh, like this one here, the Power Mac 6100, and you do also need an external debugger, and we have this PowerBook here, which will act as our debugger computer. In this video, you're going to see a whole lot of the system crashing and not much of anything else, but I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so what we've got here for our capture system, this is a Power Macintosh 6100, and it's the original 60 megahertz version. This lets us run system software 7.1.2, as opposed to the, uh, I think it's code word speed bump, which is the 66 megahertz version. And I think those ones, uh, you had a minimum of system 7.5. But I wanted to use the uh, the original 6100 here with the 712 software. Um, although the Copeland build we're running, uh, it does have different files for system 7.1 and 7.5. But to use it with system 7.5, I think you have to replace the system file. Whereas the Copeland boot files for 712, uh, you just basically throw them in your system folder and that's that's basically it. So anyway... For this system, I've put 24 megabytes of RAM in it, which should be enough. Uh, I think I've seen some problems where if you have above 32 megabytes, then you've got some problems that'll probably like error out. I guess that was just far too much memory for it to allocate. So doing 24 should be okay. I did try running it with the original 8 megabytes from the onboard memory, and it was just even worse than uh, than what you'll see soon here. And it's, it's bad. Like, this whole thing is just bad. But, yeah. Before we jump into that, we're going to talk a little bit more about how the file structure is set up. So, to use Copeland, you need to have a minimum of two partitions on your hard drive. This is my boot volume for the, uh, the System 7.1.2 software. And in this hard drive, I've just basically dumped some random files I was going to try out and stuff like that. Uh, the first thing, though, is you have to have a text file called no scarecrow mount. This basically tells Copeland not to try mounting this volume. And if you don't have this here, Copeland will try to mount it and it will go ahead and automatically corrupt your volume, which is basically all that Copeland really does. But we'll get into that a little more in detail um, in a bit here. But inside your system folder now... The one weird thing that this did is it actually changed my icons to the new icons by having this uh, modern OS enabler in here, I think, uh, which is really weird. But yeah, uh, basically the only files that you actually had to put in here were these three down here. So there's modern OS enabler, modern OS loader, and then this folder here that says modern OS. And this has... Um, a bunch of libraries and things. I think this is basically, potentially this is used by the new kernel to do the initial loading. So like we've got drivers for the, HF, uh, the HFS file system and uh, whatever else is in here. So I think this is maybe the initial loader files and then it starts loading off the other partition here. So, uh, but yeah, this is system software 7.1.2, so pretty basic, just a very basic install. And I used a CD-ROM uh, that basically, I think that shipped originally with the Power Mac 6100, so I was able to boot, it off, uh, boot off of it, install the software, and then uh, drop the Copeland files on top of it. So that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, you could try doing 7.5, but I wanted to go with 7.1 for this one. And I do have two other partitions here. The first one I'm going to look at is backup. This is not a requirement. However, uh, the Copeland partition will corrupt itself 
basically every time the Copeland system crashes, uh, in the instructions that are floating around, um, it tells you that you need to run the disk first aid pretty much every time you try to boot into Copeland. First thing you do is you boot up the Mac side, which is what you see here. Then you run disk first aid. And what I found, though, is that every time I crash Copeland, it corrupts the file system in a way that disk first aid won't fix. So what I end up doing is I reformat the Copeland partition over and over and over again. But getting the files on there would have been a pain if I didn't have the backup just available. So this backup partition, it's got the no scarecrow mount. And then in this thing, this, uh, this folder called Scarecrow Volume, this is actually just a folder that was named like this from the, uh, the Copeland archive, the one that leaked and uh, is floating around the internet. So in here, this is the actual root files that you'd have to put in your Copeland partition. So this is basically just, yeah, the files as they were from the archive. And then this here is my own little folder of crap I wanted to test. So what we're going to do is we're going to look inside the actual Copeland volume, which is exactly the same as what we just looked at. So in here, we do have like its own little system folder, Finder, Finder 8. Um, this is much different from how you'd see the other Mac OS. It's got, yeah, like these are the extensions. That's, that's basically it. I think all of the actual extensions are under this C frags folder here. So like... We've got, I don't know if they called them extensions or just libraries, if we search by name. So certain things like if you needed Apple Talk or we've got here like 68K environment bundle. I have no idea if that would be for like allowing 68K software to run, which of course it doesn't anyway. So that's irrelevant. But uh, yeah, if we scroll down here, I think we had, um, let's see, like, I think this is potentially Ethernet right there. Um, all of the quick draw GX stuff. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Copeland was uh, used quick draw GX as its like core foundation. So that explains why there's a bunch of GX crap there. So yeah, and then there's like we've got a power talk manager in here. I'd like to see if that works because uh, yeah, power talk was amusing. Um, but then we actually have uh, quick draw itself. So yeah, these are kind of like the extensions, I think. So, uh, and then there's really not much else to this. There's um, like some fonts, but really no big deal there. In the applications folder, there's a couple things that was in here. Um, we're gonna try Mac browser and we're gonna look at the appearance control panel as well. Uh, the rest of this stuff, probably not that big of a deal. There's some optional things in here. This test process. I was going to see what would happen if I put this into the CFRAGS folder, but that might just break the whole system even more. You'll see once we boot into it just how much of a pain this entire thing is. Um, but other than that, I did try to load up. Uh, there's a few things in here like GX Slide Master. This is from Copeland D9. And then I also threw some random applications in here from, uh, I think a couple of these were from Copeland D9 and the rest of these were just like PowerPC software items that I was going to try running just to see if the thing would run it. Um, but yeah, some of these don't really do anything like this. This application here, this was from the Copeland D9 CD and when you try running it in this build of Copeland, the thing crashes horribly and yeah, it breaks the whole system, so. I'm not expecting any level of, of compatibility whatsoever. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, there's a couple things that we will note. If we go and look at our uh, debugger machine, the debugger that we're going to use is the Power Mac Debugger version 2.0 F1. This is actually the one that you need to use for this build of Copeland. If you saw my other Copeland video, I was actually running a debugger version 2.1 and I tried using that one with this build of Copeland originally for that video. And that's why it didn't work because that debugger is actually too new, apparently, to interface with Copeland. So, um, okay, so when I load the debugger here, it asks me for the symbolics file, which obviously I don't have because I'm not working inside of Apple right now developing Copeland. 
Um, I'm just gonna bring up this control palette here. But uh, what we do is, so now that the debugger software has loaded, it's basically opened itself on the modem port, which is uh, on this laptop, it's actually a modem slash printer port. But uh, the debugger communicates over the modem serial port. So on the back of the PowerMac 6100, I do have a serial cable going from its modem port to this debugger machine, which is a, uh, a Macintosh PowerBook. So um, once you have the debugger open, if it doesn't complain about anything else, that means you're good. So that also means you have to make sure you don't have Apple Talk running on your serial ports because that will stop the debugger from working. So the debugger is open, ready to go. And it is version, as I mentioned here, 2.0 F1. And that's the one you need if you want to specifically run Copeland D7E1. And we've got our Power Mac ready to go. To boot into Copeland, uh, you initiate a soft restart from the OS. And then you hold down the caps lock key. And it will initiate the Copeland bootloader thingamabob. So here we go. Restart. And I've pushed my caps lock key in. And here we go. Welcome to new kernel. So in the little status thing there, it tells you that we've got the three partitions that it detected and two of them have no scarecrow mount. So it's not mounting those. And now it's going to go through the very long process of reading through all of the extensions and random crap. And what you're seeing now is the debugger computer just uh, came to life here. And if you saw my other Copeland video, this is exactly where um, I got stuck on this build for that because my debugger was too new and none of this was happening. So if you look on the debugger right now, we have a dialog that says access fault. So if we click OK, and then of course you've got like kernel registers and all these numbers, is like I don't know what this means. Um, but right now the Copeland machine is stalled. It's not going to do anything else until the debugger tells it to do something. So through my own testing, I found that the way to get around this is if you go to control and you go run kernel, It'll fail again with access fault, so we go OK. But then we go run kernel again. And then as you can see on the Copeland machine, it seems to accept that and is now continuing to load. And what I think it kind of locked up on is where it says, um, oh, OK, well, that screen disappeared. But I think it was trying to run some sort of test process that wasn't actually in there and it was failing to find and I think that's why it tripped up the debugger. Uh, I could be wrong on that one but that's just kind of my assumption. And the part we're at here is going to take a very long time to continue loading. Uh, the hard drive just continually churns away so I'm just gonna like speed up the video here because otherwise this is gonna take like a minute or two to actually run. Okay, so we've actually reached the Copeland desktop and I think it's finished loading all of its stuff because I don't hear the hard drive trying to do a bunch of reads and stuff. Now, one thing, well, we'll take a look at some of the things on the menu here. For example, uh, this one, I think this is like the code name for this build, it says Sun and Fun. And I think this particular build of Copeland was also called Maxwell in some places. I think if you were to get info on the system file that was included with the uh, that Copeland archive, I think it actually says Maxwell in the file description. So I don't know exactly what name was supposed to be what, but uh, another weird thing you'll notice is there's no Apple logo. It's still there because you can click it and it brings down this, but uh, I really couldn't tell you why they opted to not actually put the Apple logo there. That's kind of weird. But um, we're gonna go to about this Macintosh and you'll see what happens. My mouse has stopped moving and the debugger is starting to uh, read the process information because the system has now halted. So 
even the most basic of actions just causes this whole thing to just die in a fire. And with this one, let's see how we get around it. Um, so it brings us uh, this little window here, um, listwindow.cp. Okay, well, uh, I think I've tried this before. If you just keep running this one, it doesn't really make any difference. But if you go to the propagate exception, um, unhandled user exception, what if we run kernel? Uh-oh. It's possible we made this mad. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think I chose poorly. I don't think I was actually supposed to do that. Um, unfortunately, what I have here is this machine is now horribly, horribly dead. Uh, you can see as my mouse moves around and the cursor is destroyed and it's it continually spawns this error here, bad PSN. Oh my God, I have no idea what that means. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, the system is dead. I have killed it. So I have to reboot into the, uh, the other Mac volume, and uh, I probably have to format the partition again. And just for fun, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and perform the soft reboot of this computer. And we're going to take a look at the, uh, the disk first aid. And this is actually another reason why I liked System 7.1.2, because the boot screen says, Welcome to Power Macintosh. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the only version of the system software that ever said that. Uh, when it jumps up to System 7.5, uh, it goes back to saying, Welcome to Macintosh, which is, uh, I don't know, it's a little disappointing, but... Uh, so if we jump into where I have my disk first aid, if we click on the Copeland volume, we click repair. Oh, this is very weird. The volume actually appears to be okay. That is probably the first time that has ever happened. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and reboot into Copeland because I think that means we're okay. So I've got the caps lock held down again. And the debugger, we don't need to do anything with. It'll, uh, it'll change. Um, you'll see this happen when it tries to uh, get to that one point again. Um, yeah, it's loading all of its stuff. And yeah, so on the debugger, it now says the target machine seems to have been rebooted. And then it will close all of the other process windows and then refresh with the, uh, the new stuff for the new session we have here. And if the file system was, uh, oh yeah, access fault. If the file system was too corrupted, I think we wouldn't have been able to make it to this part. I think it was giving me uh, different error messages before. Um, yes, access fault, run kernel. Uh, yeah, when the file system is too corrupted, I think uh, when you get to the part actually where it says launching system process, I think this completely fails or something like that. So the fact that we've actually made it this far uh, does seem to indicate that the file system didn't have enough time to corrupt itself, which is hilarious. Uh, anyway, um, I'll just speed up this part of the video again, otherwise we'll be sitting here forever. Okay, so I think we are back, and I want to actually get into so much other stuff on this system. I don't want to try bringing up that dialogue right now, because um, I don't know if I can recover from another crash. Uh, let's just look at the other things in the menu here. Uh, let's see, we can do new folder, new font suitcase, new viewer. I don't know what that'll do. Um, under the edit... The finder preferences didn't seem to do anything. I think I tried opening this, and I think it killed it again. Um, view, this is pretty standard stuff. Uh, under the Sun and Fun menu, which is also the, uh, I think it's the special menu, um, which is what you'd see it called on other systems. Uh, basically, your standard options here. But then there's system settings. And if we open this one... Uh, Oh, okay, this just brings up the control panels, which is empty. <laughs> um, hmm. 
what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, change the appearance. And I think, okay, so I think if we go into the applications and then open this here, this is the appearance control panel. I think this will let us change the theme of Copeland. And as far as I know, there's only two themes that are on here. There's this default looking theme, and then there's one that's, uh, it's colorful. Let's just call it that. Um, I don't know if it actually has a proper name, but assuming we can get into the appearance area, I'm going to change the theme over to that one. And I already did this in my own testing and it looks so bad, but it was the mid nineties. So I guess, uh, back then people probably liked the way it looked. So yeah. And yeah, the system is so very slow. Oh no. Okay. The mouse has stopped. The debugger is coming to life. What have we done now? Oh, I think this happened originally. So uh, let's see what we have to do here. Uh, something about dialogue shadow. Let's just run it again and see what happens. Oh, okay. Uh, so it complained about something, but if we just reran the process or whatever, then apparently that fixed it. Um, so yeah, the default theme, and then we have all of our backgrounds here. Uh, there's one funny thing I'll, I'll look at here. So here's your options for background patterns. And then here it says the name and the copyright. If you click these other ones, um, what you may notice is over here, it, it didn't redraw this text box it just put the new name on top of the old name. So if we cycle through all of these backgrounds, uh, we now just have a blob of black scribble, <laughs> which is hilarious. I, I don't know how this, this operating system is so terrible, but yeah. Anyway, uh, this is the, the, I don't know. They just called the Z theme. It probably has an actual name, but uh, we're going to click it. And we're going to see what awful thing happens to my monitor now. I think this does take a while to fully process. Oh, God. This is like a kid's toy. So, <laughs> yep. We've basically enabled this theme and like this, this thing is so terrible. These elements like, uh, I mean, I know what, what these are because I use these systems, but some of these elements, like I wouldn't even know actually, like, I think this was the clothes box, but I can't remember because it's so weird now. And these other ones, I don't remember which is supposed to be which. Uh, what does this do? Oh, apparently it crashed the computer again. Oh my God. <sighs> so, yeah. If I was an Apple developer and they showed me this and said, here's your new operating system, I would probably be a Windows user right now. All right. So we're going to see what the debugger comes up with. Uh, so apparently, I guess there's a missing element in appearance, which uh, it did not like. Um, what happened? Oh, damn. Okay, we're still frozen on the Copeland machine. Uh, oh, no. I don't know if I can recover from this. Um, we're getting the same error over and over, so we're gonna go ahead and try this propagate exception. And okay.
Well, I think our only option is to run kernel, and this is probably going to... Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at this. I've completely destroyed it. Oh, my God. All right. So uh, let's just reboot and get back into the main Mac system. And uh, then I think what we're going to do is uh, run the disk first aid again. Oh, before I forget, I'm going to mention that you need to be running a screen resolution of 640 by 480 on your Copeland machine. Anything beyond that, I don't think works. Um, and that's, oh, also, um, yeah. So we're running 640 by 480 and 256 colors, which is the 8-bit color. Uh, that you basically need to make sure that's set. Uh, I think otherwise the Copeland boot will just like fail or whatever. So uh, what we're going to do though is we're going to see if my disk is corrupted. We're going to click Copeland. We're going to click repair. This is very odd. It still apparently is okay. Every time I crashed it before I was doing the capture, it failed each time. So... Well, uh, we're going to boot back into Copeland, and I'll probably just speed this part up because we've seen it so many damn times now. Okay, we're back again. The hard drive is finished churning away. Let's uh, open the hard drive. Ah, so we're not going to bother trying to do anything else with those appearance themes because that was just terrible. And all these VM files. I think this is like virtual memory stuff. Um, I'd like to try and get to the About This Mac dialogue at some point to show that the amount of RAM that's reported is kind of strange. Um, I think that's, to do, that's probably to do with uh, the virtual memory. And uh, yeah, but um, I want to try running this Mac browser. This is something I think I ran on the other one of the other builds. And I think it's like a file browser. And this one specifically came with this build, so I'm assuming it works. Um, we're just going to see how far we make it. I kind of like to keep the mouse moving whenever I try to do something in Copeland, because the moment it stops, that means things are going badly. And also the great thing about having a mechanical hard drive is I can hear it just continuously doing something. Um, okay, so yeah, here we go. Uh, I think we looked at this in, yeah, we looked at this in one of the other builds. Oh, damn, the mouse stopped. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see what the debugger wants. Uh, this is, uh, this is going pretty badly, but I mean, I don't think I expected really anything else from this operating system. This is a very early build, so yeah, it being terrible is not really that big of a surprise. Uh, unknown error calling. Uh, what is this? Call Richard. I don't know if that's an actual comment that we have to call some dude who didn't implement this yet. Uh, let me just try the mouse. Okay. So we just had to, uh, tell it to run the process again. And, uh, Oh, really? Did I just break? Yeah. Okay, so now we got an error message here about something about an icon. And right when it got to a file or folder called Scarecrow with no icon, then it tripped it up. Or maybe it can't find the icon. We'll try running it. Um, is my mouse moving? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh my god, really? Okay, so we have yet another icon error. So we go to run, and then the mouse comes back. Uh, I'm not going to keep scrolling down because this is just a, like, a miserable experience. Uh, let's see what these menus do. Uh, these kind of concern me. Um, let's see if this works. Oh, really? Uh... File text objects.c failed run. Uh, failed run. 
Uh, I think if we click this button over here, it does the same thing. So yeah, each time I click it, the same thing happens. It won't get around it. Okay, if I do the propagate exception, oh no, I'm, I'm pretty sure this thing is now just going to be completely dead. Yeah. I don't think this will save me. Oh, what's happening now? Oh, okay, let's find out what happened. Oh, damn it. Oh, God. Okay, reboot time. And for this one, I'm just going to try booting directly back into Copeland without trying to do a, uh, a check on the hard drive. So we'll see what happens. Okay, everything's loaded. Um, let's see what else we can do here. It seems like everything we do just ends in failure, so I'm really not too sure how far we're going to get here. Um, some of the more basic things about the operating system I'd like to see, like if, for example, uh, well, I don't think this will actually open up text files, but if we double-click this, I wonder what will happen. Oh, God. I should have seen this one coming, I guess. So, I'm going to see what the debugger says here. Uh, it's something about edit fields that appears to be where it's tripping up. And there was a random comment that uh, I think I saw someone um, make regarding this where the Apple the Apple people were showing this to like potential developers and like the edit fields would crash if you tried to use them. And I think that might be kind of what's happening here. And unfortunately, I think I'm stuck uh, because, yeah, this is basically just dying in a fire and I can't really do anything about it. Uh, let's see. Oh, if we keep doing that enough, it kind of got better. So now we have a stop hand and random characters. So if click OK, um, what happened now? I'm locked up. Uh, if we click on the debugger to start this and then start this and then start this. So basically, I'm just opting to run this process over and over and over again. And I think that did it. That's fascinating. So if you're trying to run this yourself, uh, I suppose if you just keep trying to run the process over and over, it'll just kind of figure itself out. Whereas if you try to propagate the exception, whatever that actually means, I have no idea. Um, bad times tend to happen. So... Uh, I wonder what will happen. I have a feeling that's just going to fail. So before that, I want to try something. I want to try this new viewer. Because, like, what is this supposed to be? I don't understand. Oh, no. I should not have done that. Oh, wait. What on earth is this? Uh, is this some sort of text thing? What if we just type in the word log, find documents, start? Oh, uh, what happened? Oh, okay, now we have a thing that says not implemented. <laughs> you know, uh, I remember this from one of the other builds where we tried to search and it came up with this on the debugger thing was not not implemented and unfortunately i think that it is going to trip us up here um because i'm just going to try seeing if i can get around this oh let's see I managed to click that button. Oh, there we go. 
So between using the debugger to run and uh, clicking the mouse over here, I managed to pause this thing trying to search because apparently it doesn't... Oh, damn. What happened now? Uh, run. Okay, so that finally closed. Uh, what other options do we have under here? New font suitcase. That's just a random file. I, uh, I don't want to double click on it, but I want to get info on it. Okay, so it's untitled font suitcase. The suitcase, I, uh, it kind of seems like it's not really implemented, so whatever. Um, I wonder what will happen if we get info on this file. Oh, come on. Uh, so we go to the debugger, we go run, we go run. Okay, there we go. Ah. Here's what I was talking about before, where it's it's called Maxwell, and then D71, and then if you look at the actual version here, so it actually says this is like system 8.0 D7E1C3. This is actually uh, fascinating. Okay. So let's see what else we can do. Now, if we hop over to these applications, this one, I'm going to try running it, and I bet it's going to horribly fail. This is from, I think this was from the uh, D9 build of Copeland, and it was some sort of like, uh, quick draw GX demonstration thing where it would draw something on the screen. So I'm really not expecting this to work, but we're going to see what happens. Oh, what's happening? Um, so we're getting a lot of error messages on the screen and well, it closed. And unfortunately, I run into another problem. No, oh, what happened? I heard a beep. Uh, okay, so the debugger beeped at me. However, we have a problem over here. Um, when an application in this build of Copeland crashes in this way, it doesn't give you the active view on your dialogues anymore. These are kind of like still the background mode where things like the scroll bar are kind of like not there anymore in the top elements where you can't close the window anymore. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any way I can get around this. Um, damn. What if I open another directory? Yeah. Now that I've opened this, I can't close it because it's, it thinks there's something in the foreground, and really this doesn't do anything here. So unfortunately, we've screwed this up royally. Um, now I just have windows all over the place that I can't do anything with. Um, yeah, like I can still drop them down into the bar here, but there's still background elements, so I can't, I, I'm stuck with them. Oh my god. Hmm. Well, uh, there's one thing I wanted to see. Uh, I'm looking for a basic application that might just run. Let's try Mac IRC. This is supposedly the PowerPC version, so I'm betting this does nothing as well, but it'll be fun to experiment with. Uh, mouse is still moving, hard drive is churning. And I would like to do probably another video of the Copeland D9 and D11 builds to see if I can run some of the same software in there. Um, I think this video might be too long to try including that, though. So, uh, Oh, hey, it's trying to load something in, I think, Open Transport because OT is, I'm assuming, Open Transport. Um, Hmm. So it failed to run that application for whatever reason. That's interesting. And yeah, we're still stuck with the window. 
because I can't do anything about that. Well, just for fun, let's try going to about this Macintosh again. Uh, okay, so the mouse is frozen. On the debugger side, it says the assertion failed in finder list window.cp. Uh, we're just going to keep on running this. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is the about window for this build of Copeland, and it calls us the uh, modern Macintosh. And so the built-in memory is reported as 8. However, this computer has 24 megabytes of RAM, and total memory is 80, which I think is like a value of full RAM, including virtual memory. So, yeah. But then, yeah, we've also got system software, and it calls itself Finder 8 in here, which is kind of neat. And, yeah, of course, I can't close this window. If I push Control-W, uh, my mouse is now frozen. And over in the debugger, it says assertion failed in finder application.cp. And if I run this again, the mouse comes back, but the window is still there because I can't close the window. So this is just like a nightmare. Um, it's a horribly useless operating system. And, oh, damn. The debugger just got mad at me. Uh, access fault. Um, if I, uh, access fault. Access fault. Uh, I think we might be stuck here. Um, if I can try clicking these out of the way at the same time. Oh, no. What's happening? Uh, oh my god. Shoot. Okay, I think we might be stuck. We're going to uh, go and do the propagate exception. Um, yeah, I think we're hosed. Run kernel. Uh, yep, yep, there we go. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is just reboot into the, uh, the original Mac, I guess. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to run another disk first aid because I'm sure by now the file system has corrupted itself. There's no way it could have lasted this long. It still appears to be okay. This this is beyond crazy. I don't know if this is just happening because I'm running the capture now, but it's so weird because it's supposed to have corrupted itself by now. Huh. Well, uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, maybe hop into Copeland one more time and just poke around at anything else that might be in there. Okay, so it looks we're back. Um, I'm wondering if we should try looking. Oh, gotta make sure I don't go over that uh, label menu. Uh, all right, let's hop into Copeland again. Oh, really? Did I just crash this by clicking on? Oh my god. Uh, we have an illegal instruction, and. I'm going to run the um, illegal instruction. How is this happening? I just double clicked on the icon. Really? We might be stuck. We just booted into this stupid machine. Uh, okay. This is probably going to end badly. Um, if we try running the process again. Connection lost? Oh, seriously? You unbelievable piece of crap. I double-clicked the icon, and it, it killed us. All right. So I booted back into the Mac here because I'm just going to try and look at disk first aid yet again because, I mean, like, that's weird. So... The volume is still okay. 
I don't understand that. Um, I'm curious what happens if I verify my boot volume. That one appears to be okay as well. Yeah, this is so weird. Well, I don't think I have anything else that I can really cover for uh, for this video because there's there's so little that you can actually do with this system. Oh, hey. So that font suitcase we made comes up as an actual font suitcase in System 7. Uh, that entitled or untitled viewer, what does that come up as? Just nothing, because the system doesn't know what it is. So that's fascinating. I want to see if uh, we can open up this system log. Oh, this is just what was uh, displayed in the, uh, like in that booting screen there. So, hmm. I think, oh, whoops. Startup tests. I don't think there's anything that we can actually look at in here. Sample. Sample test. Runtime tests. Uh, nothing in there, I guess. So, yeah, this is interesting because there's really nothing that you can run in this operating system, as far as I know. None of this stuff actually does anything. It's interesting, though, um, the version comes up as uh, not applicable in System 7, whereas it did give us an actual version number when we did a get info on this in uh, Copeland. And one thing I kind of noticed here, the size on disk and the bytes used, I think this number was strangely different on the Copeland file system in the operating system. Could have sworn the bytes used was actually larger. No, I don't know. But yeah, these applications, like, you can't run them in here. Because, um, yeah, it looks for something else. And desktop server. Because desktop animation could not be found. Ooh, I wonder what that does. All right. Uh, bear with me. We're going to do one more reboot. I want to see what this application does. Okay, so we've booted back into the system here. Um, considering what happened the last time I tried to open up the icon, uh, I'm very cautious about uh, doing that. Um, oh my god. Seriously? An illegal instruction. So, I think what might have happened is um, even though the thing says there was no file system problems, it's possible that uh, the whole system is actually screwed and I would need to do a reinstall. All right, you know what? Uh, I'm going to basically speed through this, doing a reformat of that partition and uh, reinstall those files because I want to see, yeah, we're, we're, we're gone. So I'm going to quickly speed through that and I want to see that one application run. So yeah. Okay, so we're back in here, and moment of truth. Yeah, so it opens. So even though the uh, disk first aid did not report that the disk had any problems, I think the file system had actually still corrupted itself or the files. So, I mean, maybe the file system itself was then fine, but then Copeland corrupted its own files or whatever happened. I have no idea. This machine is just junk. Um, yeah, the last thing I wanted to look at was uh, where was, oh yeah, desktop server. I have no idea what this is, so let's try running it. Um, I'm not sure if something's supposed to happen here or not. The hard drive is still doing something. Uh, OK, 
Okay, the menu bar is changing. Um, uh, what's happening to my desktop? Hmm. There's nothing there. File, debugger, about desktop server. Oh, shoot. Okay, so I made the thing mad, but I want to see what this box says. So I'm very curious as to what this application is supposed to be. So it deleted my icons from my desktop. So let's see if we can recover from this crash or whatever. Uh, okay, so it's another text object failure. Um, So I think just unimplemented text sort of uh, feature. Um, oh, really? So we got this same error again, which is, I'm assuming, not what originally was on this message box. Um, okay, the debugger has stopped again. We're just going to keep running it. Um, run. I'm hoping that after enough times, okay, there we go. And uh, so we're still in this thing, but I don't know what it does. Uh, debugger launch? Oh no, what happened here? Access fault. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening. The mouse is dead, however, the process is running. So is the kernel dead? Uh, access fault. Access fault. Access fault. Oh my god. Seriously? Um, machine exception. I have probably just killed this thing horribly machine exceptions uh, I have no idea what I'm doing here I don't think I can get out of this yeah anyway I think the, the machine is screwed so uh, I think that's going to wrap up the video on account of uh, this operating system sucks as you can see, I've been able to demonstrate absolutely nothing. The only thing that actually seemed to work in this operating system is changing the appearance into something truly awful. Every other application does not run. Uh, even basic uh, elements of the UI do not work. And it makes me wonder what exactly they were doing with this operating system because it can truly do nothing. So, yeah, like there's, there's, how are you expected to develop in this thing? I don't understand, but I'm assuming this video is probably fairly long by now because I've been capturing this garbage operating system for over an hour. And even when I trim it down, it's still going to be a lot of watching this thing crash more than watching it work. So anyway, uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, wrap this up and I will be planning a future video of uh, kind of like a revisiting of Copeland D9 and D11, assuming I can get further with those operating systems than I did in the previous video, which didn't really show a whole lot of attempts to run uh, outside applications. So with this build, um, this is the first time I think I tried to bring in applications that weren't already on the installed Copeland volume. And I mean, in this build, obviously, they all failed miserably because this thing sucks. But with D9 and D11, it's potentially, um, there is potential that I could run uh, PowerPC applications uh, that didn't have any of that 68K code in there. Because I think that's one of the things that trips up Copeland is any application that relies on the older 68k stuff um, or I don't know parts of the old Macintosh toolbox that I guess Copeland just doesn't have or who knows what 
But if you've got a very basic PowerPC native application, um, that might actually run. And I'd like to see that tested in more detail. So at some point when I have time, I will continue with this Copeland lab with the other builds and uh, seeing how far I get with those. And if you haven't seen my other Copeland video, it is about as long as this one probably will end up being. So sit back, grab a lot of popcorn, and you can watch that crap too. Anyway, that wraps this up. Uh, thanks for watching.